Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to talk a bit about some not-so-obvious reasons why the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have received a rather cool launch. And when I say cool in this context, it's not the kind of Fonzie, hey, cool. Some have said that Apple may have jumped the shark. That's a topic for a completely different video if you're interested in me diving deeper into that. I definitely have my thoughts. So, on the surface, it would seem that people are waiting for the iPhone 10, and that is entirely possible. So why then would Apple announce the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus side by side with the iPhone 10, knowing that some people may dismiss the new technology's old technology, even though the new technology that I'm using right now, this, this, this video is being recorded with an iPhone 8 Plus. It's ample technology, nothing wrong with it. It's an iterative update in years prior this very phone would have had people lining up around the block. Scalpers in the front row, right? But now all the scalpers are disappointed because, uh, unfortunately, the demand for the iPhone has been tepid. Lukewarm, at best. It's not that what the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus are is bad. R is bad? Oh, God. Uh, it's just that... Maybe, just maybe, it's not that people are waiting for the iPhone 10. it's just that they're bored with the iPhone. Maybe they're burnt out on the iPhone. Maybe their current iPhone is working just fine. Maybe it has nothing to do with what's new and what's exciting and what's coming down the pike with the iPhone 10. Maybe they don't like the direction Apple's headed with this new idea. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to know for uh, quite a while. I know that there's going to be a lot of excitement around the iPhone 10, for sure. But I'm not so sure that people aren't getting the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus because the 10's around the corner. Perhaps nerds are. I, I could understand that. You may see some kind of value in this slab of aluminum and, 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 and glass with the big nipple on it that kind of protrudes into the screen that you can't fully mitigate. But OLED! You've got an OLED enwrapped nipple? Enwrapped? Boy, I'm just batting a thousand here. So, <laughs> I feel embiggened. It's a cromulent word. So, when, when we've got the proposition that a, a relatively new set of iPhones is announced side-by-side -side with an even newer iPhone, why would Apple do that? Why? They're, they're, they're like cutting themselves off at the knees. Why? Well, it's to keep people from looking elsewhere, most likely. Because if you only saw the iPhone X as the latest iPhone, the newest iPhone, which is what it's going to be here in another month or so, would you be interested in that direction or possibly look elsewhere? They don't want you to look elsewhere. They want you to upgrade your iPhone, just like you've done possibly for every year leading up to this year. Maybe. Or maybe you're one of those who upgrades their phone every two years, every three years, maybe even every four years. Maybe people are just burnt out. I, I, I kind of get that feeling. You know, we, we've reached a point with this market, and I, I don't think it's, it's topped out, but technology is a commodity. You can get it anywhere. And honestly, you know, for the most part, and I know this is going to upset, you know, a few people, but most smartphones are the same. For the most part, uh, you can you know go into the weeds with debating, uh, you know, relative value and features and, and implementation of said features. But ultimately, they're kind of all the same. They let you do the same stuff that you've been doing for n years. So maybe people just don't want the ten or the eight or the eight plus. I, we'll find out, I'm sure, eventually. And I know the 10 has got a lot of buzz around it. And I'm pretty sure there are people who are going to wait in line because it's been suggested that uh, it's going to be in short supply. You know, they're, they're feeding that, uh, that, uh, that demand, that, that pent-up demand for the latest technology. But maybe some people just aren't on the latest technology train. Honestly, I think that uh, most of the smartphones out there, so long as they're still working, are doing okay. I think people are better off having a smartphone than they were before they had one of these pocket computers, that's for sure. Maybe the iPhone is just kind of fading into history, and I wouldn't necessarily just say that's a problem for Apple. In fact, I'm pretty sure Apple knows this is going to be an inevitable problem. 
I, I think that the entire industry is facing that issue. Why upgrade? You know, not only because of the cost, but because if you're already well served by what you have, why would you really feel the need to move to another device, especially if it came at an incredible cost? Especially if you don't see a problem with what you have. And I'm not going to fault someone for that. Never, never would I fault someone for that. So I, I just, I don't think that's an obvious answer to this question uh, because I, I've seen a few so-called techies talking and, and they're, they are uh, entitled to their own opinion. I disagree with the perspective, but suggesting that you are crazy, like certifiably, like insane. Like you've got a problem with yourself if you want an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus instead of the 10, because the 10's new, and you got the OLED screen with the nipple on it, the, the nipple that protrudes into the whole screen area. You know, I have slagged Apple so much over the past few weeks that I'm honestly surprised that my iPhone 8 Plus did not show up with spit on it. And I'm pretty sure Tim Cook is watching this video now going, why, did, why didn't we think of that? And then Johnny Ives going, aluminum. So is it possible that we've kind of reached peak smartphone it's not that people are uh you know uh, out of their mind to want a new technology that's ample an iphone 8 or an 8 plus uh it, you know instead of holding out for something that is uh it could be argued newer <laughs> i'm gonna stop short from saying better because that's a point that could be argued as well newer can't necessarily be debated that is a, a flat fact um I just don't think people are as excited about the iPhone as they used to be. I don't think people are excited about devices as they used to be. They're commonplace. They're routine. Why would you get excited about something that's really not, not new, even if it looks new-ish? Ultimately, I, I got to tell you, even as someone who, who understands how a lot of this works, uh, at least more than the average consumer, even I burnt out on this stuff. I'm like, why do I need another that? It's the same as this. I know it's looking like whatever it looks like, but it's there's no value. So I'm left there scratching my head, feeling like I'm falling behind, but really I'm not. I'm just recognizing that technology is commonplace. It's an enabler, not necessarily a destination. So yes, I expect to see uh, you know excitement around the iPhone 10, the it product. Uh, but I, I think the, the excitement around iPhones in general has been attenuated largely because uh, the, the, the culture has become um, rather acclimated to the idea of what a, a smartphone can be. I think that this is not speaking ill of Tim, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, who did not spit on my iPhone. Thank you, Tim. Uh, <laughs> not that he ever would. I don't think it's in his character. And that's speaking highly of his character. I think he's doing the best he can with Apple. I do think that it was somewhat of a mistake to do this and, and effectively cut off the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus's value uh, while trying to push into the future with the iPhone 10. But it's such a radical departure from whatever everything that I've known an iPhone to be in iOS experience. Well, even though that's kind of watered down for aforementioned reasons, you know, Apple's now giving us the iPhone 10 under the same uh, 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 understanding that it, it's the best in class and, and has the best design and all these things which now seem more than anything to be disingenuous, especially in relation to the 10. Software issues notwithstanding. But I, I do believe that, that Tim's just, uh, he's pushing the envelope. And I know that Apple's audience moving forward is not going to be the average consumer. It's going to be uh, the above average uh, a consumer that's willing to spend money on a luxury. And I think that's the direction Apple's go uh, going. Some would argue that it's always been that way. I, I don't agree. I think Apple's done an amazing job with service and software and support and, you know, everything stem to stern in years past. But cracks are starting to show uh, in this, uh, this infrastructure. I think Tim has done well enough, but uh, he said something the other day that kind of had me you know, reeling a bit. And, and I didn't respond or react to it right away because I, I really wanted to better understand it without being too dramatic. I know, believe it or not, I wasn't being dramatic or trying not to be dramatic. Uh, during a segment on Good Morning America, he said the iPhone X's $999 cost is a value price for the technology it offers. Well, if you heard that, you may mishear it as 
Tim just said the iPhone 10 is value to Apple's credit. There is an insane amount of high tech being packed into the iPhone 10. No doubt about that. And for $1,000, you may very well get a nice piece of hardware. Will you get a good user experience? I don't believe so. Will you get a good software experience? I don't believe so. Will you get cutting edge technology? Kind of, but not completely. But when he said when he said that, it, it just it, it kind of reset my expectations in terms of where Apple is and where it's going, where Tim Cook's Apple is going. And I feel I, I that that a great uh, amount of people who have le learned and, and and felt connected to Apple are going to be uh, issued. It's it's uh it's it's really it's bizarre for this to uh, to happen. Um, I'm put off by um, the direction, uh, specifically in in, 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 in in even in understanding the 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 value of this Face ID technology. I think there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt about that. In fact. If there's anything that's going to water down uh, the excitement around the iPhone 10, I don't think it's going to be the the nipple or the notch or the 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 turd bar or the the whatever you want to call it perma poo. <laughs> uh, Apple wants to call it the uh, the sensor housing. Okay, sensor housing, whatever. Uh, I think it's going to be the the fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt around Face ID. Uh, people are going to be frightened by something new. They will eventually get over it. I, I, I think that th that is a hurdle that will inevitably uh, be overcome. I don't think that's going to harm iPhone 10 sales. Um, it, it's it's that it's 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 value relative to the market needs right now that I think is the radical disconnect. And this is where I think Tim and even marketing is is, is off base. Like, do we need that? Have we been clamoring for a device that will scan our face as an authentication form? Do we? A lot of people would say, no, Touch ID has been fine. And I, I would agree, it has been fine. But I'm not going to argue the merits of a face identifier either. Um, I haven't used it, but I, I can't say that it's it's necessarily a bad thing. So if, if something's going to attenuate the excitement around uh, the iPhone 8, it's it's hearing all these announcements at the same time and, and being confused and thinking that, and this is something that I saw early on, thinking that all the features that are coming in the 10 uh, are only available in the 10. Like portrait lighting. People thought it was only available in the 10. A lot of people do. You don't believe me, just search Twitter. It'll give you the zeitgeist. So uh, lumping everything in together, it was just... It was it was short sheeting the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus for a gamble on new technology that we just don't need, that no one's screaming for. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe people are. Maybe people are out on the streets with picket signs going, Face ID, Face ID, you see me, Face ID. I don't know, I just made up that rhyme there, so I, I apologize if the cadence was a little off. The scansion could probably use a bit of improvement. I happen to be a fan of dactyls. So, was anybody asking for what the iPhone X is going to have? I don't know. So, yeah, I, I get it. It is a value price. $1,000 is, you know, pretty reasonable for high-tech, cutting-edge tech that you can carry around with you in your pocket. The question is, is society ready? Is culture ready? I'm not talking about Face ID necessarily, but all that technology is packed into this little device. Are they ready? Is what they're using now so horrendous, so bass backwards that they just cannot wait to get rid of it? Can't wait to upgrade. And I think that is a tremendous gamble. And I think uh, Apple's throwing out the baby with the bathwater. The, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus being the baby. A, a baby that would have served them for another year until the iPhone 10 could have been executed in a better capacity. And yes, I, 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 I feel very strongly about this. I, I feel it is, it, it, they, they've been making UX and UI uh, 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 decisions. That's, it's what it is, but the oversights, uh, you know, for the past at least five or six years. So it, it just doesn't surprise me that this is going to be done. But I, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily worth the cost for most people. And maybe that's where they feel, you know, or how they feel about the iPhone 8 or the 8 Plus. Um, if this changes with Apple or if this changes Apple's perception in the marketplace, um, you know, maybe, maybe it needed to happen. 
You know, I, I've, I've long said that Apple's pride uh, could get in its way. It's its own worst enemy in that sense. Uh, there's too much of an echo chamber happening. All the more reason that I think there's value in dissension, uh, you know, when, when it comes to challenging what it is that anybody kind of throws out there as, as a, a possibility. Um, and I'm not playing devil's advocate <clears throat> outright. I really fundamentally believe that th there's nothing that uh, is is exciting for the average user outright, you know, apart from the sheen uh, of a new uh, iPhone. Not to be confused with Charlie Sheen. I don't know which iPhone or if he's going to get an iPhone uh, or, you know, if he, if he, if he, is he, he's, okay, I should probably look this up. He's still around, isn't he? God, I hope he is. So, uh, <laughs> that was bad. Then again, some people, they haven't seen me in years. Oh my God, Chris Perillo, you're still alive? I didn't die. <laughs> There's Charlie Sheen, like, sitting there watching me going, I didn't die either. So, uh, <laughs> coming back to the topic, why is demand so low? Why do you think demand is so low? I mean, g give us give us some thought. Don't just knee-jerk respond, oh, it's because of the iPhone 10. Because I don't know if that's the answer. Outright. I, I think there are deeper trends, uh, you know, at play uh, th th that speak to a lot of, of uh, you know, my position about uh, the role of technology in our lives. So, I, you know, I... I, I I, I just uh, wanted to get those thoughts out in, in a, a somewhat cogent capacity. Uh, I, I do appreciate the thought that goes into leaving a comment rather than a knee-jerk response. I, I really want to elevate the conversation so that we're not just talking about bits and bytes, but how those bits and bytes uh, apply to the grander scheme of things. Um, I enjoy talking about these uh, topics at length, obviously, and really appreciate that you take the time to listen. I love you. I appreciate you, and may the Force be with you.